in the neutral zone regroup. The object is to take back space and move the puck to the opposite side of the ice. His partner needs to be about 15 feet behind him and on the opposite side of the ice to provide a pass option for him. When we're on offense, we can't think of center, left wing, and right wing. We have to think of F1, F2, and F3. The first wing back needs to swing wide, mirroring the puck as it moves from D to D. The near side forward is going to swing up and curl to the boards like a winger on a breakout pass. If the puck doesn't get there by the time he gets to the blue line, he can cut to the middle and cut across the blue line. The far side winger is going to swing up, trailing the middle option and provide a center lane option. The defenseman can pass either to the first forward moving to the middle or to the trailing forward moving through the center lane. The forward receiving the pass is going to be challenged, so he can chip to the forward at the blue line who can chip back to him moving with speed into the offensive zone. If he's pressured at the blue line, he can just chip it off the boards and the middle forward can then chase the puck behind him. Here's an example with two defensemen and one forward. Now we have two defensemen and two forwards moving. Again, we want the defense to bring the puck back to regain space, move it to the opposite side of the ice, and look for a 45 degree angle pass to a winger moving through the middle. Here's an example with three wingers. Notice you can have one winger moving in opposite directions, which is going to confuse the defensive coverage, but the principle is the same. Here's a nice level view of the same drill. Here's a couple of examples from the NHL. Notice the red wings are going to go D to D and hit the trailing forward swinging through. He's going to chip up to the blue line. Here's the World Cup with the North American team again going D to D and hitting the first forward through 